In this video, we are going to work on handwritten digit recognition data. It is the image of digits between 0 and 9 and we have total 60,000 training set and a test set of 10,000 images. The images are grayscale and the pixels are 28 by 28. These are the pictures of images between 0 and 9. You can see Let's import TensorFlow sequential model and layers from Keras. Import TensorFlow STS. From TensorFlow, import Keras. From TensorFlow.Keras. dot layers import flatten and dense layer from tensorflow dot keras import sequential We have to download the handwritten digit data set. Let's download. We will download and store in the variable mnist. We can get it from data sets. We have different data sets like Boston Housing, CIFAR10, Passion mnist. We will work on this mnist. Now we are going to store our data into tuples and we will split them into X-Train, Y-Train, X-Test, Y-Test. This is our first tuple. This is our second tuple. We have stored our data in MNIST variable. We will use the method load data. Now we have successfully stored our data into X train, Y train, X test, Y test. We can also check the shape of our X train. We can see there are 60,000 samples in our training data set and each image has a size of 28 by 28. Similarly, we can check in Y train. We can also check in X test. In testing data, we have 10,000 sample each with image of 28 into 28. We can check the minimum value and maximum value for our X train and Y train variable and we can also visualize the number in our train and test data to do that let's import numpy and matplotlib import numpy as np import matplotlib dot pyplot as plt Now we will check the values present in our X train, the minimum values and the maximum value. From NumPy, we will use the function minimum X train. Minimum value is 0 in our training data set. And let's check the maximum value. The maximum value is 255. And the minimum value in Y train and Y test will also be the same 0 and 255. We can check 
what values are present in our training data we can plot them using matplotlib let's plot one of the values first we will define figure now this function will display our plot from training data set we are going to check the first variable, the first image, and we will also color at the zeroth index. The image is number five, and the values are between zero and two fifty five. This is the minimum value and the maximum value. We can also check other images which are present in our training data set. Now we will check the image at index 1. This image is number 0. These are the images which are present in our training and test variable and we have to classify these images. One thing we need to remember that we cannot give neural network numbers greater than 1 and in our image the maximum value is 255 which we can see here and we cannot pass 255 to a neural network we need to bring it down between 0 and 1 so we have to convert our values between 0 and 1 and to do that we will divide our data with the maximum value present in our training data set so in our training data set the maximum value is 255 we are going to divide our x train with 255 so all the values will come between 0 and 1 here we are going to do that in x train we are going to divide all the numbers by 255.0 and we want the numbers to be in float that is why we are taking 255.0 similarly we will do for x test now all the numbers will come between 0 and 1 we can check once again np dot minimum of x train this is 0, 0.0 we will check the maximum value np dot max this is 1 so now all the values are between 0 and 1 we can also plot this image and check the color bar we can see here the color bar is between 0 and 255 now in the new image let's check the color bar number we can see now it is between 0 and 1 we will start building a sequential model let's make an object of sequential and store in the variable model We will define some layers which will feed information to hidden layers and then it will start training the model. Now we can add a flatten layer. So the first layer will be flatten layer and it is used to transfer the data into one dimension because we cannot pass columns to our neural network algorithms. Let's add first flatten layer and we can do that using method add. First will be flatten layer. We also have to define the input shape and the input shape will be 28 by 28, which is the pixel of our gray scale image. This is going to be our first layer, flatten layer. We will add one more layer, dense layer. Dense layer is a fully connected layer. It will connect each input layer to output layer. 
we will pass some neurons we are going to pass 128 neurons in the dense layer we also have to define the activation function activation function will be relu we will define one more layer which is going to be the output layer and in our output layer we have to define one activation function which is going to be softmax model dot add and the output layer will also be dense and here we will pass 10 the reason we are passing 10 here is because our target variable y has 10 labels from 0 to 9 so whatever is your total number of levels in your target variable you have to define that and in our case we have total 10 levels in our y variable and the activation will be softmax We will print the model summary and check the parameters. We use the function summary. These are the parameters. First, we have flatten layer and the output shape is 784. Then we have dense layer 128. Then we have the next dense layer which is 10 and the calculation for this is we multiply 28 into 28 we get 784 then we multiply 784 with 128 and add 128 we get this much of parameter 1 lakh 480 then last we multiply 128 into 10 and add 10 we get 1290 Let's compile our model because to run our model first we have to compile our model. We will use the method model.compile. While compiling we will define optimizer loss and matrix. Our optimizer will be Adam. We have loss. Our loss is going to be sparse categorical cross entropy. We are using this loss because we are having levels more than two, that is, we are having 10 levels from 0 to 9. And our matrix will be accuracy. This will tell us the accuracy between training and test data set. I forgot to put L here. We have compiled our model and now we have to fit our model. This is the last step that is model fitting once we have fit our model we will get our training and test accuracy let's fit our model model dot fit we have to define x train y train and we also have to pass the parameter epochs we are saying 10 epochs here is when the model runs for the first time, the weights will be initialized randomly and via backpropagation, weights will be updated. So, in this case, model will be run 10 times and the weights will be updated 10 times. The updation of weights are done using backpropagation technique. Let's run our model. We can see the model is running. This is for the first epoch. Our loss is 24% and accuracy is 92%. For the second epoch, loss is coming down. It has come down to 11% and the accuracy is increasing to 96%.
and as the epoch is increasing the loss is coming down and the accuracy is going up and up we can see the final loss is 0.1 percent and the accuracy is 99 percent which is quite good which is exceptional you won't get to see this this much of accuracy in a deep learning model on a real world data set we can also print it separately the loss and the accuracy let's print them separately so we will make two variable test loss and test accuracy in this variable we are going to store the loss and accuracy the method is evaluate we will define x test and y test now we are going to print test loss in our test data the loss is 0.8 percent loss and accuracy is we will print test accuracy and the accuracy is 97 percent so in our training data we are getting loss 1 percent loss and the accuracy is 99 percent in our training data set that is for 60,000 samples and for our test data that is for 10,000 samples we are getting a loss of 8 percent and the accuracy is 97 percent which is quite high and quite good this was about our sequential model in tensorflow if you have any queries you can write down in the comment section i will reply to your comments i hope you enjoyed the tutorial if you like my tutorial you can subscribe to my channel thank you for watching